We may have seen some seemingly random or arbitrary sets of numbers while working with uh, processing and reading your textbook. These are things like uh, negative 128 to 127 or 0 to 255 or all the, th all the way up to 2,147,483,648. Uh, the question is where do these come from? The answer is binary numbers. Uh, you have, I think it's kind of entered into the public consciousness that computers at their core are, are dealing with binary numbers. We talk about things like zeros and ones, we think about bytes and bits of information. Um, so this idea that computers are dealing with binary numbers uh, has kind of entered into the public conversation, public consciousness, but we don't really always understand what the implications of that are. Um, but first things first, to, to understand the connection between uh, binary counting, we, we, we have to talk about the fundamental unit, and that would be the bit. Um, the word bit is actually a contraction of the word binary and digit, uh, and this was first done um, Typically, it's attributed to Claude Shannon, who did this in 1948, uh, contracting these two words to form this new word, bit. Uh, when we count with bits, we're, we're dealing with only one of two states, zero or one, okay? Um, and that means that it's a base two number system. We deal typically with a base 10 number system. We have 10 digits, and this is typically attributed to the fact that we have 10 fingers and we're counting with our 10 fingers. Um, but we have 10 unique digits, zero through nine, and we have to do something when we're counting with these zero through nine digits, these 10 different digits, uh, when we run out of digits. So if we're counting one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, we get to nine and then we don't know what to do. We've got, we've run out of digits. We've run through zero through nine and we need to do something. So we have an overflow. We basically overflow into the tens column and have our new number 10, which is really made up of the digits one and zero. So the, f the second digit, the tens digit, uh, is replaced with a one. It's incremented from zero to this implied zero to one, and the ones digit is reset to zero. The same thing happens when we get up to 99, 96, 97, 98, 99. We've run out of digits again. We can't use any more digits, so therefore we reset the one, we reset the 10 to zero, and increment the hundreds place to one, okay? This has, same thing happens with two bit counting, okay? Or base two number counting. We count with zero, zero, okay? So if we allocate two bits to, to counting, we start with zero, zero, right? We increment the first one to one, and then we've run out of digits. Instead of going to two, three, four, we've run out of digits already. There are only two digits, zero and one. We have to now increment the next place over in order to be able to continue counting. So we increment it to one, zero. Then we move on to one, one. We take that first place and increment it again to one. Once we get to one, one, we've run, actually run out of digits again and we'd have to either overflow um, like we did with 99 to 100. Unfortunately, when we're talking about computers, um, there is no overflow. We've allocated two bits for tracking this number and therefore we can't overflow to that third place. We have to, the only course of action that we have is to reset things to zero, zero. And this is where those limitations come into play. Uh, once you've allocated a certain number of bits for keeping, keep, keeping track of a number, you can't overflow into an, the next bit over. You, you, you reset and that's where you get these maximums. That's where they say, you know, the 255 is the maximum that you can go for this number range. Um, to further illustrate this example, if we were to Im imagine four bits being dedicated to, to tracking a number, okay, and we measure out these numbers basically and you can see how I've basically started with the, 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 the position all the way to the right and I've moved to the left incrementing them until I've run out of digits okay you can see how in four bits when I allocate four bits to counting a number I have 16 unique numbers okay and in this situation the first one the 0000, zero, zero, zero the one I've circled in red here would be allocated for the zero. The one that I've circled in green here, the one, 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 would be representing 15, okay? Even though it's 16 unique values, we start counting at zero, as we do with uh, almost all computer operations, start counting at zero, and so therefore the maximum is actually one less than the number of unique values, in this case, 15. Um, and so if you want to actually find out how many unique values can be uh, produced with a, a certain number of bits. There's a formula for this. It's actually always a power of two. So you take two to the power of the number of bits that you've allocated. In the case of the previous example, we've allocated four bits. So two to the power of four equals 16 unique values. That's how you get those numbers. So all of those number ranges that you're seeing, those seemingly arbitrary numbers, everything from 255 to 
two billion whatever what I, I can't remember the whole number basically those are all powers of two and those powers of two show up because of the fact that we're using a base two number system and we're always going to be allocating all of our bits to that uh, that number range that's created by however many bits we've cr we've allocated to a, a certain operation okay um, there are bigger units of measurements as we move up the chain, just like we go from uh, millimeter to decimeter to meter to kilometer. We can do the same thing with bits and bytes. Uh, eight bits equals one byte, B-Y-T-E, okay? And then there's a little bit of a kind of computer science joke here that half of a byte equals four bits or a nibble, uh, but it, uh, this is actually an official name, four bits equals a nibble, uh, it's half of a byte, okay? Uh, some computer scientists somewhere along the lines thought that was a little bit of humor there. Um, then moving up the chain, basically, as we move from bytes to kilobytes, it's actually 1,024 bytes that equals a kilobytes, 1,024 kilobytes that equals a megabyte, and 1,024 megabytes equals a gigabyte. The question you probably are asking is, why isn't it a thousand? Well, if you look at it, two to the power of 10, is actually 1,024. Uh, again, the leaving no amount of memory uh, unallocated, they want to make sure that, the, that all 1,024 values are used, and that's the reason why we count by 1,024. And in fact, this is actually the reason why if you ever bought a hard drive and it's advertised to you as being a, 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 a 80 gigabyte hard drive, or now we're getting into terabyte hard drives, uh, every time you go up a unit of measurement, you're actually measuring by 1,024 rather than 1,000, and it's actually the rounding errors from one th uh, when compared carrying 1000 to 1024 that actually causes your formatted hard drive sp space to be less than it's actually advertised on the, on the box if you're ever curious as far as why that is uh, when you actually format it and you're actually looking at your OS it's going to be a little bit smaller than it was on the box basically but that's an overview of binary numbers and all the implications that they have for uh, computer programming <laughs>